music, art, wisdom, and religion. Make sure you stay tuned. This is the very first episode of Millennials in Hollywood here on Popcorn Talk. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. Players. And I, the only time I heard it was on Victoria's Secret's fashion show, oh, okay, and he yeah. killed it. And I was like, I have never heard this, but it just, it, I, I just love the energy of it. You know, it kind of takes you back to like the 90s. I know, I'm obsessed with it. Yes. But you guys, we are here for the very first episode of Millennials in Hollywood on Popcorn Talk. You guys can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Mr. Dakota T. Jones. And our very special guest, a young woman who's discovered her love for entertainment while performing at her grandmother's banquets. Yay! Someone who's made it to the top 250 singers at the 2013 LA X Factor auditions. Very oh, cool. Thank you. And someone who's even modeled for Miss Tyra Banks. Oh, we thank have Kalima. You. That's such a great intro. Thank you. I, it's so funny because, like, you know, I just feel like when you're going after your dreams, I don't like count everything. I'm just uh -huh. like, great, I got this. You know, it's like bucket list, but yeah. like to hear it all like together, like, oh gosh, that's I so know. awesome. That's Thank so you. Cool. Yeah, of course. You guys, you're like so awesome. Oh. You're one of my friends. I love you yes, so much. Yes, and I love you too. Thank you for even having yes, me. I'm so happy. Yes, of course. We, uh, we, for those of you who don't know, we've done a few after shows together. Yeah. We have so much fun doing awesome things. Um, but let's kind of get into it. Let's kind of break down your username. Where can everyone find you on social media? So you, they can, you guys can find me absolutely everywhere at Kalima Music Art Wisdom. I just say Google it. You'll find yeah. my Twitter. Um, my Twitter specifically is Lima Wisdom E N T. But you know, it's it's the hub. Kalima yes. Music Art Wisdom. Yeah. Awesome. And I love the username. And I kind of want to start breaking it down a little bit. We'll yeah. start with music and art. Okay. Uh, like I said, you got your start singing at your grandmother's banquets and events. How was that? As a yeah, child? Like, it was. You know what? Unfortunately, my grandma passed away when I was 16, so oh. it was short lived. Yeah. But um, I think growing up, just being around I didn't realize that me being so creative today had anything to do with I, you know, I just thought it was a gnat that I had, yeah. but as I grow up, I'm like, oh my goodness, my grandmother saying, oh my goodness, yeah. my grandmother um, did fashion design, and she was actually the first person to ever give me her platform. Um, her, she was a fashion designer, and mm. her um, label was Shahid's African and Islamic Wear, where she oh, specifically, that's cool. yes, she specifically. Um, made clothes with uh, African, real authentic African materials, wow. but it was modest, which in Islam, it's very, um, it's the tradition to right. even down to your ankles, you know, you're supposed to cover your, you know, pretty much literally covering, but still being able to be fashionable. Yeah. And she tried to create something where women couldn't feel, you know, good about the way that they look, but right. still being able to be modest. That is so, so cool. yeah. That and I, I still cool. try to, you know, emulate that today, but you know, it's, it is different times. It's modern right. times. So, um, I've, I've got my own little spin on right. it, but yeah, yeah, she's definitely a big inspiration when it comes to, for me, for fashion, for music, for That's art. Awesome. So yeah. That's amazing. We yeah. have this beautiful little picture oh of goodness. you here. Was that like when you were first time performing? So that was my was first that... time, yes, because um, at her fashion shows, it wasn't until I was 10 years old that she allowed me to sing for Aww. her um, fashion shows, but um, the fashion show slash banquet, this was my first time walking the runway. Wow. I think I was like two years old. Oh my goodness, <laughs> and look how cute you are. That is so cute. That's one of those photos that you just want to like frame. It's and, just like, unbelievable, yeah. Because it's like, this is the start of like, you wanting it's to be the in it's the, the entertainment yeah. industry. It's, it's so funny exciting. when I, I literally when when they said, oh, well, you'll need some photos. I was like, let me call my mom back in Florida and see. And she sent me these pictures and I was just like, it's so crazy how time flies. Yeah. And it's like, wow, like it was inside of me even the, at this young age, you I know? know. And look, you're just beaming. You're just so excited oh, to be there. It's so yay. cute. Thank you. If I, uh, like go forward a few years, you know, it's a few years later, but mm -hmm. made it to the top 250 singers at the 2013 L.A. Um, X Factor auditions. Like, how was that? Because I'm a big fan of the show. Ooh. What was it like? performing in front of the executive producers. I know you. Yeah, yeah. it was amazing. So it was 17,000 people who auditioned, two days of auditioning, 12 hours per day, wow. literally sitting, waiting for them to call my number. Now this specifically was from um, Home Shopping Network with right. Tyra Banks. Yes. But um, yeah, with X Factor, um, it was... It was it was awesome because I was in I'm literally coming from Florida like just trying to find some sort of in to get to LA yeah. and to it was the first time that I was literally surrounded 
in an arena not a room arena full of talented singers and for me um my favorite quote is your network is your net worth yeah so i loved meeting and you know networking with these people and just finding out oh my goodness like literally you know it's so la where you just talk to someone and then you find out they have literally 20 million views you know tw yeah. twenty thousand followers you know just big big platforms and it's like wow like i'm in the same room as yeah. these people so um it was such it was so great and I didn't realize, I didn't expect me to get as far as I did, but the very, very last round for the auditions before they chose who would make it to the show was the top 250. And wow. I got the yellow slip and I still have all of my slips That's from cool. all of the rounds. Yeah, um, but it was great and I still am friends with the people that made it to the last round with that me too. So, awesome. so That's super cool. Yeah, it's an accomplishment. Definitely, <laughs> that is definitely. With however, how many people showed up to that? That's yeah. huge, that's Crazy. amazing. It's even crazy to think about. I I remember just being so tired because yeah. you, you you you're sitting around all day and then you got to go into a room and give it like you just walked like you just like you just showed up and you just came from rehearsals yeah. you know you gotta you gotta it's only one first impression so what did you yeah. sing I sang Adele Ride is Rain. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. yes. That's awesome. I, I actually, think I've seen a cover yeah, of Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. I, it is on YouTube, so you guys can um, go see it. But yeah, I remember I went and the producers, before I got to the um, executive, the last round, they were like, you, because they, they said choose an upbeat song, choose a slow song, yeah. and they kind of tell you what they think you should audition with the next song. So the one that got me all the way to the end was Adele Ride is Rain. Yeah. Such a great song. Such yes, a great I love song. that yes. song. And you do a lot of covers and you do some self written music as well absolutely so what kind of inspires you to write music what do you look for whenever you want to to make music so when i was when i was 10 years old i wrote my first song called i'm thankful which my grandma allowed me to sing at 10 years old at one of her um banquets mm -hmm. but um i just always was a very communicative person i that's why i went to school for journalism and now i'm a host here at after buzz tv but um so for me it was very natural to start with poems because mm -hmm. i didn't have any music to sing to so i just would make poems but then i just remember one day oh my goodness it's so crazy to think about but <laughs> i was listening to michael jackson's um childhood which is probably one of my favorite songs by him yeah and me and my sister for some reason were you know playing you know how you just play as kids and you make pallets on the floor but yes. then you fall asleep me and my sister we fell asleep I woke up before her and I just remember being like I'm going to sing I'm gonna write a song I'm gonna write a poem but I'm gonna make it into a song and so um ever since then I started writing songs but Lauren I, I do remember at two years old I was in my mom's red van, my parents' red van mm -hmm. in the back, and one of Lauren Hill's songs came on, and I remember the feeling that I that I got from listening to the way that she sang but still told a story. Yeah. But it really took you it took it made I'm two years old, but I felt like I was being taken taken into her world, right. you know. She was I think the video of it, you know, I don't know, I guess maybe just in my mind I pictured her in a big city and mm -hmm. Um, I just remembered the the feeling that I got from yeah. the way that the music from Michael Jackson to Lauryn Hill um, made me feel, and I loved that feeling, and I always wanted to chase it, and so yeah. I think I just started writing. That's awesome. <laughs> that is so cool. It's kind of hard for for those of you who who have ever tried writing music. It is very kind of hard. I mean, sometimes once you get into it, it's easy. You know, you just start, uh -huh. you know, letting go, and it's amazing. But it, after when you're first starting, it's kind of hard to just get into it and absolutely find your way and what yeah. your voice is and what you want to convey. But yeah whenever you hear it on the radio yeah. or like any kind of song on the radio that makes you takes you to some place absolutely it's just so worth it that feeling it, after absolutely you've... and you know it's so crazy that you say that because i feel like um even for me like starting out writing i wrote i used to write songs all the time but then you go to middle school you know how it is high yeah. school you get all these distractions from kids who don't have the same vision as you don't have the same dream so and also this is the this is um another really lovely quote that I like it's um you know artists they expose their wounds while still trying to you know um cure them yeah. still trying to 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 take care of their wounds so I'm literally writing out my heart going through grieving that yeah. that emotion um while still trying to make art out of it you know so I think I took because middle school was really hard for me. High school was really hard for me. Just yeah. just making friends and feel, feeling like people understood me. So um, I didn't want to feel it. I didn't want to feel the pain. So mm -hmm. I took a lot of time. Stopped and I stopped writing until, um, you know, I would say until late high school, early college yeah. days, and then I got back into it. But yes, it's very true. It's hard to to stick with it when you know 
that you know you're you're pretty much putting your own life out there right yeah writing is very vulnerable it it's just is. a very vulnerable thing yeah um now let's get into some of the art side you do a lot of photography which i have seen just through your snapchats and all Yay. that kind of stuff that's like very big passion of yours i'm mm -hmm. guessing yeah right? mm -hmm. so um i was i i wanted to be a contributing writer for university of south florida st petersburg's newspaper mm -hmm. um and then they were like well we already have enough writers would you be interested in being the photographer and I was like well I love like Instagram and stuff yeah. and I was like sure whatever I feel like I have really good vision anyway as far as you know artists I'm a visual person um so I went into it took a photojournalism class where they actually someone I, I they, you were supposed to buy your own camera for this class and it had to be a DSLR I'm like wow. who has that money yeah right? <laughs> so I found someone was able to give it to me let me borrow wow. it for the class couldn't believe it. oh that's actually what it was. It was because I was with the newspaper. They had standby cameras for the photographer, wow, for the photojournalism. Cool. Yeah. yeah, I just realized that. Yeah, so that's how I actually was able to get the, the, the camera for that class. And I was literally learning mm -hmm. at the same time while being creative with my own photography. So I was learning about my camera while, you know, exploring my myself. Right. And, um, yeah, that's really how I got into it. And ever since then, I mean, every time I go to Florida, visit my family they're always like okay we'll take photos while you're here That's because it's awesome. memories you yeah. know yeah and i really love it really really love photography yeah. Yeah. photography is so much fun i'm really into the like the instax right now i brought my camera so we can take a oh, photo yay. later okay but um yeah i'm so into photography yeah i know you're also very into acting as well as singing and modeling yeah. and you've actually got to model for tyra bank yes, which is yes, amazing yes. we have a photo here yes walk us through how that happened oh my goodness so i have a talent agent in florida uh -huh. ben's model and talent they've they really um got me my biggest work in mm -hmm. in in this industry for sure my first talent agent ever and um i just you know and i'm and i really really say this in the sense of like i totally was just submitting for things submitting for things submitting for things why not submit for Tyra Banks? I submitted for it. Right. And I got the call and um, she was, my, my agent was like, Kalima Tyra wants you. Like she handpicked and, and most of the time if there's a client that they work with, um, you know, the client, whether it's because it was for her um, makeup brand, Tyra Beauty, mm -hmm. usually there's a third, you know, an executive or someone else that's picking the models, you know, doing the, like the marketing company right. for her doing it. But she's very involved with all of the things that she does, as you can imagine with um, America's Next Top Model. She's yeah. very, very involved with all of her projects. And so, yeah, I was blown away. Very, very, very grateful. I remember calling my dad and he started crying. My that's dad does amazing. not cry. <laughs> he was like, I'm so proud of you. I was like, thank you for me. And it's crazy. I was in class and I I just, I remember it was one of those college classes where you, you pretty much just get an A to show up to right. class and yeah. listen. So I just remember hanging up because I, I had to pick up my agent's phone call. Right. So I picked it up. I'm like, hello. She's like, they want you. Can you do it? I said, I can still do it. Hung wow. up and I just go right back to class because it really, truly is just that was the life like that was that is my life you yeah. know submitting for jobs and you book some you don't book some and the one that the universe god allowed me to book yeah was tyra banks and That's i just amazing. yeah i just it, it was an awesome experience too she's extremely sweet she's so funny that's what i was gonna ask she's you. so yeah. funny yeah she's awesome and um i mean this photo i was so nervous yeah um she's so tall and yeah, yeah she just she's absolutely gorgeous i one of the movies that you know her movie the movie that Super Size Me. Yes. Obsessed with that movie growing up. And, you know, her her character was a live doll. Legit. When I saw her, I was like, oh, my God, you're literally like a beautiful she's doll. Gorgeous. Like, yeah. she's gorgeous. That's yeah. what I was going to ask is if she was as nice in person as she seems. Because oh my goodness. some people think that she's like a diva or this or that. But she just seems so nice and so genuine. She's so nice and she's so genuine. And um, it sucks because I, I modeled for her. She only did three shows. Mm -hmm. And so usually with um, Home Shopping Network, which I've worked with as a model for a couple couple of years about maybe three to four years um usually if you book with a specific brand they'll continue to use you as the model instead of casting for a new model every yeah. time they have a show so she only did three shows which still it was so awesome to still be in the same room with her and yeah. have her familiar with my face and that sort of thing but she is really really big so she had her green room you know we go on set we're very professional she goes to her green room but that's just because everybody wanted to take a photo with her yeah but i'm very very grateful yeah that's that awesome. amazing that is is so cool. I, I ever since I seen that photo on your Instagram, I'm like, I've got to ask her about how Yay. that happened because that's just amazing. So yeah. congratulations. Thank you so much. And it's so it's so great because I was like, oh, I I thought about America's Next Top Model, but I'm like, I am I like modeling, 
but I prefer commercial modeling. Yeah. Like, I don't see myself as a supermodel because I love to eat. <laughs> and I'm not really, you know, I, I love I love my shape just naturally, you know. So I'm just like, I don't want to feel pressured right. with the norms of the industry. Exactly. So it's amazing how God still allowed me to work with Tyra, but not with America's Next Top Model. Right. It's amazing how you think, oh, this is the only way I'll ever be able to see Tyra. But it's like, no, like, there are other ways. So for me, it was just, it was such a blessing. And it, it just goes to show, like... You know, just put your foot in front of the other and you'll see where you end up. It exactly. doesn't, it's not always going to be our own plan. Right. Sometimes our own plan isn't the best plan. So. Exactly. That's, yeah. that's an awesome story. That's really Yay, cool. Now you. let's kind of get into the wisdom mm-hmm. side. We've got a lot of big topics to discuss. I'm so excited. So before we start, I've talked to you guys or talked to you about this before, but I just want everyone to know that this is all coming from a very loving place. Yes. Um, I'm a Christian. Yes. And you're a Muslim. Yes. And we're sitting down having a conversation <laughs> and it's possible guys like let me tell you it's yeah, possible and yeah. so i just want to say first of all i love you so much oh, and I, thank you for being open course. to talk about this. no absolutely and thank yeah. you so much for even having me here and yeah. i'm i'm really excited so that's awesome yeah so right now um what is it like being a muslim living in america at, at the current moment of everything that's going on right now all right that's a that's a serious question so let me really take that in what yeah. is it like being a Muslim, I feel like the first word that comes to my mind is truly just misunderstood. Yeah. I think that, excuse me, I'm a living example of what a Muslim is, but Mm -hmm. still the news, the media, and when we say media, media literally means television, radio, it's movies is considered media. The media has stereotyped one sort of religion, which it's unfair because Every single, you're you're a Christian, right. but when you walk around, you technically could be Buddhist. Yeah. You don't look like what is the look of a Christian? You right, know, exactly. what is the look of a Muslim? I, you know, I cover sometimes for the most part it's you know fashionable things like how you see me right now. Right. Um, except when I go to prayer, I definitely cover fully, but. Um, I, I am not the stereotypical, which let's be real, stereotypical is is is, it's fake. It's mm-hmm. it's what. It's, it's a way that we can put you all in a box and put you under a label. So for me, it really and truly is misunderstood. The only difference is I'm not Arab. Mm-hmm. So to be, very on, to be very honest with you and to kind of help and educate you guys, unfortunately, Arabs have it harder because they fit that stereotype. Yeah. You don't look at me and you don't think, Ar- you don't think Muslim, you know? Right. You just see a black girl with, with a scarf on her head and then I tell you I'm Muslim. I mean, even Arabs sometimes, they're like, oh, you're Muslim because they've even bought into the stereotype where there aren't even black Muslims. Yeah, that's and it's very like, sad. yes, I was born Muslim. It wasn't even like a converting sort of right. situation. So, yeah, I think just mis- misunderstood overall, yeah. for sure. So you were raised Muslim. Totally, yeah, so born your, and raised. Your family, your parents, everyone. Right. So yeah. my dad was 17 when he converted. My mom was 12 when she converted, and then my dad met my mom when she was 20, and mm-hmm. they got married. But then I was born Muslim. So okay, yeah. And we have some beautiful photos of you in your headscarf. I know that. Yay. Oh, that is so pretty. Yeah. Where were you in this photo? So this is at my house, um, oh, back wow. in Florida. Yes. And then the next one, I love this next photo because it's like the shot of the three and you're just like serving. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, that jacket, it's actually like, uh, it's like a, it was a dress originally Mm -hmm. from like the sixties and that my mom just hoarded and kept. And I loved the color and I had this leopard scarf with the same pink tip at the end uh-huh. and I had nothing to wear. I had no, I was like, I have nothing to match this pink. Like the only thing is I have is my, my mom's old dress here. And so I took it to my uncle red who has literally built clothing, designed clothes out of his room, no training at all, literally built suits. And he, um, I told him, I sketched out what I wanted and he sketched this out. And I think, I think it, it's kind of going back to my grandmother just being inspired with showing modesty yeah. but still being able to be fashionable. Exactly. And so yeah, I really, really love this. I Thank know, you so much. Yeah, being fashionable is not just like a oh, okay, well I gotta wear something scandalous. Exactly. Like you know, there are times yeah. for that I guess. Absolutely. You know, everyone loves to do that. But I love how you can be so modest and so beautiful and elegant and just I think that shows a lot about a person as well, being able to do that and be modest. Thank you so much. So yes. I, yeah, I love that. And then also you run a Facebook page called Islam Daily. How did that come about? Oh my goodness. So basically, I just was getting, you know, I feel like 
I don't know, maybe most people, maybe not. I felt like um, as a child, you just raised oh, my parents. This is the, the religion that my parents practice, mm -hmm. so I'm going to practice it. But then as I got older, I had a lot of questions. Yeah. And I wanted to, to learn more about it and um, ended up doing some research myself and started to get really into the quotes from the Quran, but started also to listen to more lectures mm -hmm. on pe like, like a preacher, which we call an imam, just lectures online on YouTube with... Um, people preaching and teaching um, the religion and so I got a lot of quotes that I just loved and I was gonna I was posting it more so on my page but I said this this is so inspirational I want a lot I want I want uh, to be I want to be able to provide a platform for anyone mm -hmm. to be able to go and look at you know, and and find wisdom for the day. We have Monday motivation. Why why not have a daily motivation? Yeah. But um, with the hub of Islam based based on Islam, but something that could be relatable to anyone, to even an atheist. You mm -hmm. know, so um, that's that's really where it came from. Just wanting to continue to share a lot more, whether it be news, whether it be quotes, whether it be music. You know, but just under the just just sort of for the modern day Muslim who's yeah. like, I don't really know too much about the religion. I was just born this way but what's something that as i'm str scrolling down my timeline i can just get a little quote that'll yeah. educate me you know make me make make me be able to make it through the day and and that's really where it came from that's cool i love how you're very much into making like a hub for different things you know <laughs> like so you funny. have you have like a whole area where you can go and do this and yeah. then you have like a whole area where everyone can keep up with you on this and this and all your usernames are pretty much the same oh my gosh like it's, it's very organized and that's i love so that you have that and all those inspirational quotes and just you're, you just seem to kind of like radiate positivity which is yes super thank important you so for people. much yes, yeah that's course. truly honestly and truly that's just my thing i've i've always said is um i knew that you know especially in this industry they're going to label you you mm -hmm. have to have a brand and I said, I don't want to be the person who's just kind of walking blindly with an agent who tells you you need this or a manager who tells you you need this. Like, I wanted to know my brand so I know what the focus was. Yeah. And so I said, for sure, for sure, I would not be able to make my family proud unless it had to do with, you know, trying to be a public figure of positivity. Yeah. So from the inception of me with this dream, I said, I've got to figure out a way to Kalima music art wisdom it, yeah. you know, That's some so cool. some way to kind of put them all together so people can understand who I am, but also know at the very end of the day, it's it's all for love, you yeah. know? Yeah. That's awesome. And I love hearing that kind of side because there's so many negative sides that we hear. And like, I feel like we don't hear enough about the positive. Yeah. And so when, what was the first time that you realized that some people like may look down on your religion or how, like who you are? Um, I think I gotta be, you know, a couple months after 9-11, gotta be, you know? Yeah. And like I said, I'm unfortunately blessed to be able to have a black skin where I can walk in a grocery store with a scarf like this and they'll just assume it's fashion. You yeah. know, they're not going to think like bomb. They're not going to think, you know, and, and I hate to be, you know, so vulgar with that, but that's really and truly the reality. I'm, that's not an exaggeration. Right. I have Arab friends who literally have considered taking it off because of their own safety, just being followed. They're, they're driving around and they're being followed by a man several blocks and they're a woman and they're like, what am I going to do? Because they're not not bad people there's religions I don't think that religions are bad unless it specifically promotes something that's yeah. bad but there are bad people who just really and truly just came from bad circumstances and chose to make bad decisions unfortunately they're claiming that this is the reason why um, and so it's something that my um, the people of my religion are still trying to continuously yeah. fight and prove differently but I think just after 9-11 I mean I remember I was in fifth grade I remember my teacher literally stopping class, turning on the news. And before that day, I remember telling people I was Muslim and they had no, they were like, I've never even heard of that religion really? before. And it's the second biggest religion in the world. It's actually the fastest growing religion. But yes, I remember, and, and of course I'm in fifth grade, so all they all really know growing up is what, you know, Christianity. I mean, I think it's the most common, really, it is the most common religion here in America. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it, people didn't even question my religion until then. They were like, I've never even heard about this religion. Wow. So yeah, that was really the beginning for me. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think that like the actions of a few people call them radicals? Yeah. Why do you think those actions of those few people blanket 
an entire religion for some people. Now, this is only my perception. The only the only thing that I can possibly think of is that we feel we feel I feel like we feel as if we understand things better when we can label it. Yeah. When we can put them in a box, when we can say, okay, this is what it looks like, this is what it means, yeah. you know? But really it's not always black and white. It truly, truly isn't. Like I'm like I said again, I'm living and breathing an example of someone who was born Muslim, Lindsay Lohan just converted to Islam. I saw that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So there, you know, it just goes to show that the person's intentions are really is really the defining you know factor whether you i don't even want to say good muslim but it i'm just saying like it you you're an example and i'm responsible for myself they're mm -hmm. responsible for responsible for themselves i have no idea why that because of who they were mm -hmm. or because of the actions that they did that were so horrible allowed them to to get this label you yeah. know because i on my life like it truly is just to me, it only makes sense is that they just, they were like, how are we going to label this person? Right. But if you think about it, when you see the news every single day, when someone breaks into um, a house and yeah. fire burns eight people, and we don't ask what their religion is if the name was um, Pablo or if yeah. the name was Jimmy. We don't ask, oh, well, what was his religion? You know, only when it's like Muhammad or, you know, Ahmed or, you know, some something that sounds like it could be associated with terrorism, it's like, and they sometimes, and you know, mm -hmm. and you guys, I'm sure if you really listen and you look for it, you'll, you'll understand, like, sometimes they don't even have facts yet. They'll just be like, and we're getting word that it is believed to be, believed you to know, be, yeah. um, uh, uh, associated with a terrorist attack or associated with ISIS, mm -hmm. you know. That's just putting a plant subconsciously in the viewer's mind to make them think that, oh, it's associated with it. Associated is not black and white, honey. Yeah. Associated means um, we're assuming that it may be. We're still doing research on it. Right. But and before, it, be they should do the research before even yeah. coming out with that because but that's, that's very, news, though. It's very destructive. That's news. It's yeah, so absolutely. And I've um, interned for big um, news news platforms and obviously I have a journalism degree. So I understand that. Um, that is really what they do for views mm -hmm. because some people literally wake up every day and they want to, they just, they're, they're so scared. They yeah. want to find out. And I'm telling you what you Google, what you look and what you seek out for, you'll always find. It's just like what they say with boyfriend and girlfriends. Well, if I, if you go through his phone, you going to find what you're looking for. Right. You know what I'm saying? It really is the same. But if you start to Google for what you really want to find, positivity if you want to find that you will find it right um yeah so it really is just a misconception and unfortunately we have news they're a business too they got to make money they got to get clicks it just hates that they, i just hate that they make their money and get their views based on tearing down mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. you know but it's, it's a trend. Just, it's a trend. Yeah. And that's what I've learned. I've as as these years have gone by since 9/11, I've learned that this is just a number one trend in America mm -hmm. and unfortunately it ain't died down anytime soon. It's even resulted in half of the country voting for someone who wants to ban Muslims. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's un it's unfortunate. I mean, that alone obviously is a completely other, no, you know, yeah. brand brand new conversation yeah. that we could go on. <laughs> but yeah, because it's just like it's so to me it's so dumb to like look at this way when the 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 terrorism could also be coming from this way but because you're so focused on this you're never going to see I mean come on now if they were smart enough they could you know just people who are bad people are can also be I I don't I don't I don't know I don't want to like you know tear people down but yeah. I just feel like if you if you really wanted to do something bad you could use someone that isn't expected to do that thing that's yeah. bad you know so it's just i think it's just so it's it's a failed strategy to kind of p pinpoint one group of people who haven't really proven anything to you you know yeah. but because i think when people are so scared they're just like listen let's just take that whole thing away but time will show them that even when you do that if you literally kicked all of us out of the country too harm is still gonna happen in exactly. america you know what yeah. i mean like it's it's inevitable yeah. but yeah that's what i that's actually kind of leading to the next question i was going to ask you okay what do you think i mean this is kind of a big question so if you can't fully answer it i understand okay. what do you think the president might need to do in order to kind of uh, That's a great question. to make up for some of the things that he said about your religion. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like Dakota, he said so many, question. so many things that have torn down the name of. I've never thought of that. Um, 
So what could he do to make... And honestly, um, there's a quote which a lot of us follow regardless of what religion you're in. Um, if you... How are you supposed to want God to forgive you if you can't forgive others? Mm -hmm. So I know for a fact, for a fact, we want it to go away. We would love for him to wake up one morning and say, you know what? I was wrong. I apologize. You are all welcome back in this country. I honestly feel like it may be as, as easy as that. Just because I think he's created a brand that's so insensitive mm -hmm. to see him be sensitive for even two seconds on CNN, which probably wouldn't be CNN because yeah. it's fake news, yeah. but Fox or whatever, any sort of platform, if he were to go and, you know, genuinely look us, you know, look the camera in the eye and say, I want to start over, I think it would be as easy as that. Because yeah. the thing is, I don't know why they're not broadcasting all of the masjids, all of the mosques, all of the preachers, you know, the imams, like I, like I spoke of, all of the Muslim activists who are trying to get on those big platforms and say, listen, let me be an example. We do not stand with ISIS. We do not agree with these people. Yeah. But they're not given. They're not being given the, those platforms. No. So how would the public know? You yeah. know. Yeah. I feel like with Trump. I hate the word because it's so, you know, like even just saying it, it's like, Represents, I know it, it carries yeah. a lot of, of weight. Mm -hmm. um, I think even if he just sat down and said something like you mentioned, or he has like a board of people, have a Muslim come exactly. on beyond the board. Exactly. Oh and my goodness. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. show that, you know, we need to represent everyone in America. He says he's, he's for all people mm -hmm. and he needs to kind of prove that in a sense and mm -hmm. be like, yes, I want someone like that on my board and I need to work with them very closely mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and realize mm -hmm. that not all of them are going to be doing what I think that they are. Exactly, you know? exactly. And I think that there's even other political geniuses and, and, and um, you know, Barack Obama being one, but um, just other people in politics who have definitely said you know there are personal like even hillary clinton i think she there was someone there was some um person who was close to her who was a muslim and she was like listen that truly if you were to give them a chance and a, a, be, create an alliance with them it would only make it better but pushing them away it's gonna make things yeah tense. yeah it's gonna make things tense exactly yeah. exactly so um i don't know like i said i really feel like time will tell yeah yeah I know it's kind of it is one of those things where it kind of stinks when you're you're waiting and you're waiting and I, you wish everything could be solved like right now. Right. And unfortunately, with with social media for right. one, oh that right, it blankets all everything and makes it all like you said. It kind of puts it all in a box and puts it on a shelf <laughs> and it's like this is what you're getting. Right, right, right. And it still creates that trend. It's yeah. trending, trending, trending. So it's like. This is all we understand, right. you know? Right, exactly. And, yeah. and one of those things that also I want to briefly touch on is how have you personally been affected by misinformed people? Like, specific instances. Has anyone, like, once you've said, hey, I am a Muslim, have they reacted in a certain way that wasn't... Well, yeah, I've actually had um, one of my close, really close friends from middle school decided to to stop being my friend she wow. asked me a lot of questions about religion sometimes i i'm not the biggest muslim super religious so i had to go to my mom have my mom speak with her and i think that she was just she bought into the lie unfortunately so much yeah. that there was nothing i could tell her and also another friend um in college did the same thing so i just feel like just like any instance if a friend if a friend end up ends up you know leaving you they weren't meant to be your friend exactly. in the first way so you know i got i gotta let that go and i like i said time will tell like i don't have to be the one to prove it to them like right. they're gonna see it like god's gonna allow them to see it to yes. be honest yeah yeah, yeah i can't do everything <laughs> i know yeah exactly and i know it must feel like a weight mm -hmm. you know because you feel like i need to be doing things but i think oh you my just gosh. being the positive influence that you thank are you. is doing a lot yeah thank you so much because yeah, that's course. that's really the, that's really it like even doing an interview i'm just one representation i can't represent a whole religion yeah. like right just yeah. like i can't represent the entire christian religion yeah. because i know a lot of times people now associate christianity with hate mm -hmm. it's like a big deal right now oh that like oh you're christian oh you must hate this these people and these people mm -hmm. which i hate because it kind of i <laughs> hate 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 yeah yeah, saying, yeah but you know what i'm saying i yeah. strongly dislike mm -hmm. how they try to put everyone in boxes yeah and it's the same even for us too you know and and not just from the outside but even from the inside where we're we put so much pressure like oh well if you're muslim then this is what perfection is and you don't meet that so you're clearly not muslim you're gay so you're clearly not muslim you yeah. know just all of of these these uh your requirements and it makes that's what pushes people away from religion in the first place is yep. no acceptance but no love you know yep. how can you say it represents love but you tell people that you're not good enough so exactly yeah 
And I guess, what do you have to say to any closed-minded people who might be watching? Ooh, okay. Give me a chance, oh, yeah. I guess. I don't know. Um, you know what? Closed-mindedness is never going to help you thrive and learn. It's only going to take an open heart to understand the lifestyle th that I live, but also to learn to grow yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I just think if you keep yourself in a box, you're never going to explore what a beautiful world, regardless of religion. How are you going to, how can you travel the world and appreciate different beautiful things that the universe provides if you're going to keep yourself closed, you know? And, and you're limiting yourself, really. Yeah. As a closed-minded person, you're limiting yourself. So I hope you give me a chance in the sense of um, I hope that, that you allow me to be an example um, and really genuinely see that I am an example of a Muslim. Yeah. Period. I mean, what you see on the news is not always real news. Sometimes it is fake news. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. And I, I love how you are using your social media platform, your presence in the entertainment industry, Yay. even here at After Buzz, to show everyone. And I feel like it's awesome that you're using all of your outlets to like, make it a positive place in the oh world. thank so, you so yes. much and you too i love that you even care to broadcast this and give me this platform and and my word this platform so i appreciate you too to go to i love course, you i love you i know I'm sorry. <laughs> we just like totally i know we totally <laughs> <laughs> okay but before we wrap up um any any upcoming projects plans goals anything Ooh, like goodness. that um i always have things coming up right now i'm doing queen boss on after buzz so you awesome. guys can definitely watch that it's actually talking about um female entrepreneurs specifically african-american female entrepreneurs if you love shark tank you would love that show That's and cool. we're talking about that um you know what just follow me at kalima music art wisdom you'll see all of the things that i have going on um you know it's it's a never-ending life in la yes so exactly there's a lot know. of exciting things happening yeah in LA. and lastly i do want to show this last photo of you i think this is Ooh. absolutely gorgeous this black and white photo of you I just can't wait to see your journey and more oh, of what's going to happen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. I love keeping up I with you. I love this picture too. I know, right? Yay! So thank you so much for joining thank me. Thank you. Um, you guys can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Mr. Dakota T. Jones. Um, you can follow Popcorn Talk on all social media platforms at Popcorn Talk or the Popcorn Talk Network. Just look it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Give us a five-star rating on iTunes if you're listening to us there. Also, make sure to follow Kalima. Again, Woo! where can everyone find you one more time? At Kalima Music Art Wisdom, where pop culture meets wisdom. All right, and you guys can join us here next week for another episode of Millennials in Hollywood, talking about very personal things that people are passionate about, because sometimes you're just tired of listening to the same questions being asked in interviews. <laughs> so make sure you tune in, guys. Thank you again for joining us, Woo! and have a great night. Have a good night. It's Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network. We would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.